Would you pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you so much for Laura and Adam. And the commitment they made to each other to start a family, start a life together. And Lord, as we come to you today, we ask that they listen to the vows that they're going to speak to each other. And if they'll take those vows seriously and commit those to their heart, that they'll always have a strong and loving relationship. And we pray, Lord, that they always look to you for guidance and wisdom as they go about their life. And if they keep you the center of their lives, their family will be a strong and loving family. So, Lord, as we come to you today, we ask that you bless each and every family represented here today. Give them safety on their travels home. And as always, Lord, we'll give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Adam, it's Debbie and Levi Eyes. Honor and privilege to present Laura to you to be your wife. Everybody make sure you turn your cell phones off and have a seat. On behalf of the families of Adam and Laura, I thank you for coming today to witness this blessed occasion, the uniting of Adam Garrett and Laura Harris Christian matrimony. We are gathered here today in the sight of God and in the presence of this company to witness the union of Laura Harris and Adam Garrett in Christian marriage. May our Heavenly Father look down upon this event with His smile of approval. May the Lord Jesus Christ be present and at His blessing. And may the Holy Spirit attend and seal these vows with His love. For, for marriage is a gift given by God to promote social order provide for the nurturing of His children, and to increase human happiness. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and everything on the earth, and above the earth, and below the earth, and He said that it was good. But then God created man in His own image. God took special time and care in creating man, for man would be His crown jewel of all creation. But God never said that that was good. Instead, He said that it was not good for a man to be alone. It wasn't that the first Adam <laughs> didn't have anything to do, and, and I expect that'll be true of this Adam too. <laughs> for he had to figure out the names for all the animals of the earth and take care of those animals. But God noticed that man did not have anyone like him, so he put Adam in a deep sleep and removed a rib from his side and created a woman to be a helper and a companion for him. In the act of creation, God didn't take a woman from man's head so she would rule over him, nor did he take a bone from Adam's feet so that he would trample upon her. Marriage is a partnership. It will take a lot of give and take on both of your parts. The marriages that succeed are the ones that have found the middle ground and stand upon God's promises. God took the bone from the, from the side so that Adam's wife would be equal with him and from close to his heart, so he would love, cherish, and honor her. Then he presented woman to man to serve as his helper and companion. Marriage is God's gift to deliver us from our isolation and our loneliness. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 20 through 24, we read these words. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then with the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Adam, I want you to listen to what the first Adam said in verse 23. Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Adam Laura is not only going to be your wife, she is going to be a part of you. She will be your helpmate. She will be your comfort in times of struggle. She is the one that God specifically designed for you. And Laura, Adam will not only be your husband, but he will be the one that you talk to late at night. He will be the one that you that gives you comfort when life throws its rocks at you. God has designed him just for you. Adam and Laura, as you prepare to pledge your vows to each other, 
let me remind you that marriage, that a marriage made in heaven is a union of two lives, two hearts that beat as one, so welded together that they walk and work in love. A husband and wife should bear each other's burdens as well as share each other's joys. Remember that you will have to cultivate the art of living together. Be considerate, loving, helpful, and tender-hearted. Always putting the other one's needs first and holding one another up in love. The vows that you're about to take should be as binding in adversity as they are in prosperity. They should be broken only by death. When you say until death do us part, it is a covenant between both of you and God. It can only be accomplished by His love and by His help, which He illustrates to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This time Levi, the Lord's brother, and my son is going to read uh, from 1 Corinthians. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become as a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide these three, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Adam, and take the Lord to be your wife, I require you to promise to love and to cherish her, to honor and sustain her in sickness and in health, in poverty, as in in wealth, in bad that may darken her days, in the good that may brighten your ways, and to be true to her until death alone shall part you. Adam, do you so promise? And Laura, in taking Adam to be your husband, I require you to promise to love and cherish him, to honor and sustain him in sickness and in health, in poverty as in in wealth, in the bad that may darken your ways, your days, and in the good that may brighten your ways, to be true to him until death alone shall part you. Lord, do you so promise? I do. The wedding rings have long been a token of well, a marriage. It's also a never-ending circle to signify the never-ending love, first of all, of God for us. A never-ending circle of His love and the never-ending circle of a husband for a wife. It's also made of the purest of metal to simplify, simplify, simplify the purity of our love for one another. So Adam, would you take the Lord's ring and place it on His finger? her finger and repeat after me. I Adam. I Adam. Take you, Laura. Take you, Laura. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have it to hold. To have it to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. 
with, and with this ring, I pledge you my love. Laura, would you also repeat after me as you place that one on his finger? I, Laura. I, Laura. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And with this ring. And with this ring. I pledge you my love. I pledge you my love. The candles burning over here in the on the corner table and the flowers are presented in memory of some of the grandparents that couldn't be here today. Some of them have passed and are, I think, witnessing from heaven. My mother couldn't be here. She's, she's just not able to get around. But we are glad that Adam's one grandmother could be here with us today. But we let's all pause and Thank the Lord for everyone in our past that has, that has made this day possible. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for those that have gone before us that have paved the way and brightened the way for the day that we're experiencing today. Lord, we thank you for those that have gone before us that have been such a great part of our lives and of Lord and Adam's life, have set examples in so many ways that they've provided for us throughout their lives, Lord. May you bless these memories and may you help each of us live a life that when we're gone, people will have good memories also. Thank you again for everything you do for us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. This time, Laura and Adam are going to present some flowers to their mothers. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
They must have practiced late last night. <laughs> Please turn around and face the assembly. Friends and family of the bride and groom, it is my pleasure to introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Adam Garrett. I think the immediate wedding party will stay out in the back and the rest of Or do you say it's out to go over? The rest of them go on down. The immediate wedding party needs to gather in the back back there again. Thank you all so much for being I'd go hungry 
To make you feel my 